here is but a backdrop of constant motion. I stand... Good day, you two. It's nice to see you here at this festive time. So, got any jobs for us? Hmm, I'm afraid I'd struggle to find you any commissions in the near future. With the arrival of the Windbloom Festival, the only task most Mondstadters are busy with is preparing gifts for their loved ones, but it's customary to do this oneself without assistance. Think of this period as the off-season for the Mondstadt branch of the Adventurers Guild. Spring is here, love is in the air, and everyone wants to relax and enjoy themselves. Even the cats at the tavern next door have been getting lovey-dovey with one another recently. Ew. Gross. You know that feeling you get when you burst out the doors after a nice nap, hoping to make it to the store before the limited edition drinks sell out, only to get there just in time to see the last two glasses snatched away right from under your nose by a couple of pesky lovebirds? <sighs> That's what this feels like. <laughs> Perhaps you two could simply take this chance to... Traveler! Paimon! Thank goodness I found you. Um, there's something I need your help with. Woo! Sucrose? Go ahead, Sucrose. We don't have anything else to do right now anyway. Phew. Okay, here's the situation. I've been appointed as the Windbloom Festival Special Ambassador by the Knights of Favonius this year. My task is to do good deeds for people during this festival of gratitude and love. Nice one! So how did they decide who to appoint anyway? They spun an empty bottle donated by Angel Share inside a circle with all our names on it. Whoever's name the bottle stopped at got chosen. I think so too. But everyone said that it was to make it fair. So everyone had an equal chance to become the special ambassador. The thing is, I'm not great at dealing with people, so I was really daunted by it at first. But I'm still glad that I got this role. Luckily, I came up with a way to spur myself on, which has helped. Have a look. Is that a test tube? Yep, every time I do a good deed for someone, I get them to breathe into a test tube. That way, I can collect everyone's breaths of joy. Sounds... fascinating! Are you gonna use them in your research? Yes. I believe these breaths of joy will serve as valuable raw materials for our chemical transmutation. With any luck, I'll be able to produce something truly miraculous. Mmm. Darn, now Paimon's hungry. Wait, you're doing this on purpose, aren't you? <laughs> Actually, I meant something even more exciting than that. I can't say for sure until I have more test results to confirm my hypothesis, though. Alchemists mustn't make claims they can't live up to. Anyway, I'm still missing one final breath of joy. Oh, is that all you need help with? That's easy! Just treat Paimon to a sweet madame, then you'll get your last breath of joy! Hey, come on! Paimon's doing her best to help, okay? <sighs> so, does it need to be more, like, official or ceremonious or something? No, joy isn't measured in those terms at all. Let me put it this way. Have you ever planted a fruit seed and cared for it while it grows? In the same way that those tender, sweet fruits are the product of your time and effort, the amount of joy derived from an experience is positively correlated to the degree of hardship overcome during it. For example, in my case, I would say that to experience a statistically significant amount of joy, I'd have to do something like spend six months developing a medicine formula to a point where it was finally consistently effective. Similarly, in order to collect a significant amount of joy from other people, I have to find ways to do something sufficiently challenging on their behalf. Oh, Paimon gets it now! Long story short, you want us to help you find people for you to help! 
Oh, that's pretty tough given that it's the Windbloom Festival and all. Oh, I figured since you're such experienced travelers, you might have some ideas. But if even you don't know how to approach this... Yes, you're right. Well, if he's in, then Paimon will help too. With the talking, anyway. But, um, if things don't work out, can Paimon still get that sweet madame? Oh, come on, Traveler. This is a festival of gratitude and love, after all. How could you refuse? Excuse me, Sucrose. Could I borrow you for a second? Package for you. Oh, sure. Be right back. Wait! Is that who Paimon thinks it is? That's Kale, right? When did she arrive at Mondstadt? Let's go say hi! What are the chances? You are staring into space just now. Something the matter? Um... <laughs> no, don't worry. I'm fine. I was just looking at a Mondstadt children's book in the souvenir shop over there. While I was flipping through it, a piece of paper fell out. The writing on it was really mysterious. Almost like a prophecy. If you can do these things... You may light the lantern of utmost joy and receive a supreme blessing. And what does these things refer to? Find a flower that is not of this world. Find a guide who will never get lost. Find one who would never lie. Find a legend that never ends. So, four things in total. Here, have a look. I asked a lady who owns the store about it, but she said that she didn't know anything about any paper slips. Hi there. Sorry to butt in, but... What's the name of that storybook you just mentioned? Oh, <laughs> it was called The Boar Princess. Hmm, that is strange. I've read that book, and it sounds like that note you found has no relation to the story at all. Um... Do you know her? Let Paimon do the honors. Kale, this is Sucrose, an alchemist with the Knights of Avonius. And Sucrose, meet Kale. She's a trainee forest ranger from Sumeru's Avidia Forest. Hello. Uh, hi. Ah. Uh, mm -mm. uh, this is getting awkward fast. They're both so shy. So, Sucrose, what are your thoughts on this prophecy? Could it be real? I, um, without having done any research, I couldn't comment definitively. Mm. Um, but if you want my subjective opinion, I don't think that it's a nasty prank or anything. The only people who read children's books are those with a childlike wonder and imagination. Or children, of course. I'm sure that whoever put this prophecy there would understand that. Would they really do this just to spread lies and ruin someone's innocence? I can't imagine anyone being so cruel. That's a great take! I love it! Exactly! Who would want to hurt a child's feelings? Okay, so... What do you think the blessing is, Sucrose? Hmm... Um... 
If I had to guess, maybe a fairy that can make people's wishes come true or something? I haven't read many fairy tales, so this is pure speculation. With no other information on hand or prior research to compare against, I'm afraid it might not even be worth considering. Wow! Her guesswork is really good, though. I want to pick her brain some more. But will she find it annoying if I keep asking her questions? We've only just met, after all. Uh, what's the best thing to say to someone you're meeting for the first time? Uh, well, <laughs> yes. I, I mean, if possible. Then, what would you wish for, Kale? Um... I'd wish for a... A better personality. Uh-huh. Huh? You can't waste it on that! You've got a great personality already! That's very kind of you. Uh, but... If you know me like I do... Kalei! I know that voice! It's... You made good time, huh? You're way earlier than I expected. I spotted your green hair way off in the distance. Good thing my eyes are sharp, or I'd have missed you. Amber! Have you been doing well? Did you... finish all the pita pockets I brought you last time? You bet. They're getting yummier each time you make them. Huh? Wait, remind Paimon, have you been to Mondstadt before? Mm-hmm. A long time ago, I had a lot of help from a lot of people here in Mondstadt. So ever since my Elizar got better, I've been looking out for an opportunity to come back to Mondstadt and tell them all the news that I've been cured. <laughs> Thanks. If it's okay with everyone, why don't I take Kale for a walk around town? I'd like to show her some of the places she didn't get to see last time. Of course. Fine by me. Sure, go right ahead! I, uh... Um... Sorry, Amber. I agreed to meet my traveling companions by the city gate in a few minutes, so... I can't go with you just yet. Oh, that's alright. In that case, you guys go rest up, and I'll go see Master Jean to ask for some time off. Oh, <laughs> okay. Traveler Sucrose, could you look after Kale for now? I'll come get her later and take her out. There's still a whole bunch of people I need to introduce her to. Sure, no problem. Awesome. See you later then. <sighs> um. You all right there, Kale? You look kind of disappointed. I'm sorry. I'm just feeling a little shy today. Don't worry about me. Hmm. Amber wants to introduce me to more of her friends. Am I gonna be able to cope? I've only met Sucro so far, and I'm already struggling to make conversation. I wish I had a little more self-confidence, but I'd find it much easier to make friends with people. Ah, it's nearly time! Let's go to the gate and see if they've arrived. Why is this humble windmill such a great view? I mean, it's understandable. It must have been a long time since you last came to Mondstadt. Because it is the true Great Vayu Viastra? <sighs> oh, come on. Don't tell me you don't get it. View, Vayu, and also Mahamatra, 
Vayu v Astra? No? Kainari! Sino! Over here! Whew, am I glad to see you. And who's this young lady? Master, this is Sucrose, an alchemist with the Knights of Favonius. We just met. Sucrose, this is my teacher, Tainari. He's a highly respected forest watcher in Sumeru, and he's also a very famous botanist. Kale's exaggerating. I'm Tainari. Pleased to meet you. <sighs> so you have a teacher as well. The pleasure is all mine, Tainari, sir. Yep, he's extremely knowledgeable too. And this is General Mahamatra Sino of the Sumeru Academia. He's really famous in Sumeru as well. Greetings. Though if I might say so, we're purely here for personal reasons. You needn't be unduly concerned with our official positions. And Kale, there's no need to use my full title. Sino is fine. Or sir, if you absolutely must. Indeed. We're not here in an official capacity just to keep Kale company on her vacation. Keep me company? But it was you two that insisted on coming! Kale is very important to us. We felt obliged to ensure her safety on the long, treacherous journey to Mondstadt. But I've been here on my own loads of times before! What about your work, though? What if something bad happens while the General Mahamatra's away. There should be no issues. I have left my duties in the hands of my subordinates, and two especially reliable helpers. Oh, Sucrose! What were you saying about you having a teacher as well? I was just going to mention that I think we're in a somewhat similar situation. I'm an assistant to Mr. Albedo, Mondstadt's genius alchemist. Oh, please, Sucrose. Genius is an unnecessary epithet. It will serve only to leave an exaggerated impression of me in the minds of our guests. Mr. Albedo, but it is an objective truth. Hey, Albedo's here too! Great! The more the merrier! Hmm. So tell me, Sucrose, since your specialty is bioalchemy, what do you know about the antitoxic properties of the calla lily? I've studied the Kel Lily in quite some detail before, with it being a species native to Mondstadt. I wrote a whole report on my findings. If you're interested, Mr. Tainari, sir, I can go get it for you. <sighs> We're supposed to be here on vacation, and you're already thinking about how to improve your herbal medicines? Also, I thought we'd agreed to take on new identities for this trip. Mine was Adventurer Sino, skilled desert explorer. Tainari's was technological consultant to the treasure hoarders, and Kale's was traveling musician. Very much so. I do wish some of the less cautious adventurers in the Avidya Forest would consider coming to Mondstadt instead. What Philanimo mushrooms lack in texture, they make up for in not causing vomiting or diarrhea. Are you contemplating using some compounds from the calla lily as active ingredients in a targeted antidote? Yes, I gathered a few on the way here, and my initial research suggests to me that it could be worth a try. Okay, I got it. But as much as I don't wish to be a wet blanket, 
It takes a huge amount of experimental data to conclusively prove how different drugs interact. Estimating the total development time would be very difficult. Add in the time for procurement and delivery of essential materials, and I'm not sure if we could complete development before you need to return. Then please, allow me to help. Mr. Albedo! Apologies for my tardy entrance in the present discussion. I understand you're looking to make an antidote for poisonous fungi, correct? If you happen to have some samples with you, or relevant documentation on hand, perhaps you might give me the chance to review them later. But before that, I invite the three of you to look at this. Arrangements. Were you quietly writing this up the whole time? Pylon didn't even notice! Hardly. Rather, I should apologize for interrupting a serious discussion between trained professionals, especially after they've traveled so far to be here, when I myself am neither an adventurer, nor a technological consultant, nor a musician. Nevertheless, I would encourage you to have a knowledgeable local arrange your detailed itinerary while you're in Mondstadt. Take a look. And should you find anything here to be objectionable, it can easily be adjusted. This is too kind of you. These arrangements are quite excellent. It looks great! Even Paimon feels like tagging along for the food and board. That's why it's called tagging along! Very comprehensive. The adventurer, technological consultant, and musician I'll approve. Just one thing. We'd like the chance to cook as well. Why don't we change the group dinner to a camping and cooking trip? I'll help pitch the tents. I can help too. Um, and Paimon will take him to Good Hunter to order some starters. Mondstadt's cold cut platter is not to be missed. Great, then it's decided. Sucrose and I will bring the three of you to your inn for a quick rest. You two, let's meet by the lake this evening. Would you like anything else? Um, do we, uh, want anything else?
I'll give you the sweet flower from that sweet madame as a wind bloom. <laughs> no need to worry about that. Paimon can make room for good food. <laughs> All right, just a moment. Oh, mm, that was great. If that was a wind bloom treat, then Paimon wishes it could be the wind bloom festival every day. Looks like we're all here. Not at all. We just came early to set everything up, since we happen to be free today. Kali put up the tent so quickly, but still managed to tie very sturdy knots. You can really tell that she's a professional. I didn't do much apart from passing materials around. <laughs> thanks. It's all thanks to Master and Sino. They taught me everything I know. What can I say? For a skilled adventurer, this is just another day on the job. Uh, are you quite finished? Or were you going to sing each other's praises till the moon rises? Come on, let's all sit down. That sunshine sprat was really very good. I didn't watch you cook it, but... I believe that the prominent umami flavor of the dish owes itself to more than the fish alone. That's correct. Any further deductions? Let me think. The aroma was quite uniform. Unlike that of a spice blend, it was also unfamiliar to me. So I would venture that it was a Mondstadt specialty. As far as edible Mondstadt plant species are concerned, Calla lilies are usually used in soups, so if I had to guess... Small lampgrass? That's right. I've long heard that Sumeru's fish with cream sauce is noted for its gentle texture, which brings out the tenderness of the fish. Here in Mondstadt, we're not quite as varied in the use of spices as in Sumeru, but the principle of bringing certain distinct flavors to the forefront through combinations of natural ingredients, it... I liked it a lot. I'm curious as to the exact ratio of ingredients. I'll write a copy of the recipe for you. Would anyone like to try the nutrient-dense meal I made? I'll have some. What about you, Kale? It doesn't look like you've eaten very much. Is your appetite low at the moment? Uh, no. I just don't eat a lot normally. Hmm. Um, sorry. I didn't mean to make things awkward. Tainari. While we were on the road, we spotted something white, walking on two legs. Was that Paimon? Which day was this? Just after passing through Stonegate. Hmm. Uh, Sino, are you sure your eyes were working that day? Or maybe your hood was blocking your vision? Paimon always flies. There's no way she'd ever walk. Hmm. Is that right? I thought that you'd made me snacked on too many local ground nuts. <sighs> no? Not funny? Ground, you know. As in ground up, but also the ground. Ground nuts make you fall to the ground. Uh, think of this as 
part of the process of getting to know Sino. Uh, on the bright side, these jokes show that he thinks of you as his friends. Still, we could test the hypothesis. What hypothesis? That plant species indigenous to Mondstadt may have an effect on the motor functions of flying lifeforms. Hey! Paimon's not your test subject! Anyway, by your logic, wouldn't that mean that eating, say, Zytune peaches, that would make a sick Paimon peachy in no time or something? Hey! Not you two! <laughs> I think the Traveler and Paimon's conversations are more entertaining than Sino's jokes. Ah, I see. You must have been keeping quiet about this grievance for quite some time now. You seem much cheerier now that you're here in Mondstadt, Sino. Actually, it feels like you're a completely different person. That's because I'm Sino the Adventurer. Hmm? It's not? In fairness, you only saw him in his work mode while you were in Sumeru. He's actually like this most of the time when he's in a good mood. Yep, it's true. Sometimes when he's eating, he'll grumble about how the bowl is too shallow for the amount of food it contains and other random stuff like that. I understand. Then allow me to reintroduce myself. Before, you knew me as General Mahamatra Sino. Now, please see me as Sino the Adventurer. Uh, yeah, so that's another thing he does. He'll keep repeating something he thinks is funny until you stop trying to resist. Hmm. So you have two different mental states? Almost like different phases of matter. Interesting. I want to learn to do that too. I think in your case, the two states we would end up with would be highly conscientious sucrose and <laughs> stupefied sucrose. Oh, by the way, was there any reason in particular that you chose Mondstadt as your destination on this occasion? told me that the Windbloom Festival is one of Mondstadt's biggest events of the year. I wanted to take this opportunity to give everyone a Windbloom, as a token of my heartfelt gratitude for everything they've done to look after me. Plus, it was a good chance for Kale to get out and meet some new people. Kale, Lily. What? Kale's Windbloom. Maybe she should call it a Kale Lily. It sounds very Mondstadt. There's also Kale Flower, which would technically make more sense. But somehow, it doesn't sound as nice. Moving swiftly on... Wow! He just completely ignored the joke and carried on the conversation. Uh, just sometimes that's the only way forward. <sighs> Sumeru's been through some major changes recently, and things at work have only just started to calm down. I don't get many opportunities to take a vacation, and this was a chance to join Kale on her trip while also learning a few things about Mondstadt's flora and fauna that I'll be able to pass on to my peers and students on my return. Two birds with one stone. How about you, Sino? I came to ensure Kale's safety. That's just an excuse. Plain and simple. <sighs> also... There's the matter of a Genius Invocation TCG custom-made card back. Aha! So you did have an ulterior motive! Have you all played Genius Invocation TCG before? And that is why I am proud to call you my friend. When I first began contemplating getting a new card back, I asked around before eventually deciding to ask the legendary Mr. Kalks for a friend of mine, Sawada whom I played cards with on occasion. 
had been to Inazuma for the Irodori Festival. He told me that Calx was a Mondstadter, so I should try my luck there. Calx? Uh, isn't that... You mean, he's a friend of yours? I see. So, you came to Mondstadt in search of Calx. No, that is inaccurate. I came here principally to protect Kale. You most certainly did not. Kale's been here on the quiet numerous times, and this is the first time you felt the need to join. Not only me. Same applies to you too, doesn't it? <laughs> if my writer friend were here now, I'm sure he would describe this curious coincidence as having the makings of a good story. It's always a pleasure to meet a fan. Oh, here he comes! Wait, you mean you're Mr. Calx? Having my new friends address me by my pen name feels... Uh, somewhat unusual. Please, just call me Albedo. Huh. So you're Calx. Sino's been talking about you non-stop recently. He's intent on getting you to design a bespoke card back for him. Uh, you didn't have to say all that. I don't usually take private commissions, but I believe that we are friends now, all of us. Our conversations have been deep and interesting, and Sino, your passion for this game is indeed one of a kind. I can see it in your eyes. <laughs> Obviously. And given that you've come all this way from Sumeru to see me, I'd be quite honored to take this commission. Wow, your teacher's so nice. I feel the same about yours. Um, well, they definitely have different personalities, but they're similar when it comes to their character. So? How much should I budget for the timeless masterpiece you will produce for me? Surely, timeless masterpiece is something of an overstatement. Any artwork fit to appear on the reverse of my card decks is by definition a timeless masterpiece. Even if I do say so myself. Don't mind him. These TCG nutjobs are all like this. I see. So, this has an almost religious significance. Well, for starters, I'd like to hear a few more of your jokes. My jokes? You like them? I do. Really? I didn't see you laughing. Yeah, well, the joke's ability to induce laughter is a separate matter, but I certainly find them fun. If I might interrupt, uh, does anyone else smell something strange? Uh, my nutritional meal! Will it be okay? Should we go over and take a look too? <sighs> Only the base is burned. We can still use the cooking pot. It just needs a bit of a wash. Good thing Tainari's nose is so sharp. Has he been in this kind of situation a lot before? <sighs> I know, it's just... I'm sorry to disappoint Sino. I guess we'll have to do this again another day. Oh, uh, yes. I'm not sure if you've noticed. Kale seems a little... depressed. I noticed she was in a low mood when everyone was talking. Remember that note she received? I was just thinking. I want to try solving this riddle and giving Kali the chance to accept the blessing. Oh, yeah! She's the one who needs your help. Exactly. Maybe she'll be willing to breathe into my test tube. But anyway, that can wait. As much as I'd like to make progress in my research, I'd prefer to see her smile. Alright, we'll help out too. You will? Then tell me, honestly, do you think that this prophecy is for real too? Uh-huh. Right! Alright. Let's meet at the Alchemy Crafting Bench in the city. 
I've got some thinking to do in the meantime. We're back! Oh, what a shame. You just missed a joke about windmills. Stop. Please. I don't need to hear it a fifth time. That bad, huh? Hmm. Well, now Paimon really wants to hear it for some reason. Didn't you say you want to see the Dragon of the East at some point? When are you going? Tomorrow morning. And you? What are your plans? I'll go into the mountains to have a stroll and collect a few plants as samples. Oh, uh, perhaps I could join you? I'll be looking for inspiration for these card back illustrations. Found you! I knew I was onto something as soon as I saw the fire. Wow, you have really sharp eyes. That's an outrider for you. Uh-oh. Did we break the fire safety rules or something? Actually, you didn't. Strictly speaking, you should have reported your plans first. But since two of our very own alchemists are here, I'm happy to look the other way. <laughs> ah, yes, introductions. I'm Amber, and this is the Reconnaissance Company Captain Eula, a good friend of mine. Good evening. You are friends of Kale, yes? A pleasure to meet you. Oh, Amber and Eula. The pleasure is ours. I've heard a lot about both of you from Kale. Oh, really? All positive, I hope. You asked that last time, too! Of course it was positive! I'd say. We hear the latest news about you every time you write to Kale. <laughs> Glad to know we've made a good impression so far. Anyway, we're just here to collect Kale, so don't let us interrupt your chat. Come on, Kale. We're gonna take you to check out a few scenic spots. Okay, great! <laughs> Still as high energy as always. Hmm? You know Amber? Yes, we've met. She's Kale's most important friend. And for that, we are also very grateful to her. <sighs> That's Amber for you! Her outgoing personality means she can make friends with just about anybody! Hmm. It's getting late, and we still have a lot lined up tomorrow. I suggest we all head back and get some rest. All right, I'll start packing up. You're gonna get the tone-deaf bard to check out that note, aren't you? <laughs> Guess Paimon knows you pretty well, huh? Knowing him, he should be hitting the taverns around this time. We can go corner him and make him answer our questions. Let's move!
Ho, oh, it's been a while. Hi, my girl, did tone this by drinking as usual. Put your drink down and get your game face on. We've got some important questions for you, mister. Uh, okay. So, what do you make of it? <laughs> Aren't you forgetting something? It's the Windbloom Festival right now. You can't just go around asking people for help so blatantly. Ugh. Well, if you won't tell us the answer, could you at least tell us if this thing's worth a shot? Sounds to me like you want a hint or two. <laughs> a fine answer. The person who wrote this prophecy is very powerful. If you manage to solve the riddle, good things are sure to happen. Also, I happen to know where this lantern is. Once you've found the four things, I'll even write the location down for you. Isn't that generous of me? <laughs> Whatever. We weren't expecting much from you anyway. You can get back to guzzling wind and blowing wind now. Hmm. Oh, woe is me. Paimon sees me as nothing more than a drunken wastrel. There are actually a great many things that we bards are required to do. <laughs> it just happens that enjoying life is the most important one. Once this is over, would you like to join me for a drink? You know, a favor for a favor. <laughs> a flower that is not of this world. Hmm. Not of this world. Sucrose! We've got some good news and some bad news. Which would you like to hear first? Um, let's have the bad news first, I guess. Huh? Really? Don't most people usually want to hear the good stuff first? Oh, alright then. Basically, we went to Windrise to divine the breeze. The wind said that the prophecy is real and that your idea is a really good one. That doesn't sound like bad news. So what's the real bad news then? Uh, Paimon ate the bad news! <laughs> uh... Blame Sino! If it's not funny, then it's his fault! It's fine. Well, that puts my mind at rest. Now, back to the other issue I've been mulling over. I was thinking about the flower that is not of this world. It could mean a human-cultivated variety that doesn't occur in nature. But that's basically claiming that it doesn't come from this world in the first place, when actually it's just a variant of an existing breed. So, the initial question is, can the flower's origins be traced back to a natural organism? If so, it cannot be correctly described as not of this world. But then, supposing we identified something outside of that category, whose job would it be to decide whether it belongs in this world or not? Then the question becomes, do of this world and from this world mean the same thing? Or is it deeper than that? Whoa, whoa, slow down! Paimon's head is already starting to spin! Okay, um... I did have one other line of thought as well. What about a flower created using alchemy? Would that be not of this world? Albedo may know the answer, but asking him right away would be like asking the teacher for the answers to your exam paper. It would render our search for the truth meaningless. I'd rather try and figure this out for myself. Could it be the wind bloom? Oh, now that you mention it, that's definitely a possibility. The wind bloom doesn't refer to a specific flower. Everyone defines what it means for themselves. In which case, the wind bloom doesn't exist in reality. <sighs> This does seem like a promising direction. I've made a note. Okay, I better go read up on this. Yay! Paimon was 
actually useful this time. Guess we have that sweet Madame to thank, huh? I'll need some time to prepare. Could we meet up here in, say, two days' time? Sure thing. In the meantime, we'll also think about the other three riddles in the prophecy. But, uh, since we're really going for this now, shouldn't we say something to Kali about it? I originally wanted to leave it as a surprise for her, and I also didn't want to get her hopes up over nothing. But you're right, Paimon. I'll need to be careful how I word it. But I'll try to find some time over the next couple days to mention it to her. Alright. Thanks so much. <laughs>